This time on Video Game Tango, we talk about TERFs and Harry Potter, and the FTC files suit against Microsoft and Activision Blizzard for their acquisition. Then we talk about the future of Video Game Tango, and we want your input. I'm Nick, and here at Video Game Tango, we only talk in good faith. DLC for $15.99. Hi, I'm Josh, and it turns out I wasn't fired. My name's Andy, and this is Video Game Tango. Ho, ho, ho. We're back. I thought I had been fired, actually. Yeah, um, well. Uh, you were for a hot minute. I, okay, I'm glad I made the I, cut. I wouldn't I say it, it, never be, <laughs> it never became official, mm-hmm. but it was. Uh, paperwork got sent to HR. There were talks. Uh, <laughs> there, there were talks. I mean, have you not wondered why your paychecks have never shown up? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I haven't. We can pay to do this? Yeah. <laughs> no shit. We're all interns, <laughs> and we didn't realize it. So, uh, yeah, we've been gone hiatus for a couple weeks. Um, Plague. I was yeah. sick. Famine. I got, I got very no, sick. I sadly got sick uh, right after bragging about never getting sick. It was, yeah. a little, yeah. it was a little disappointing, honestly. A little ironic. Yeah. 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 Karmic. Kind so. of a bitch move on my immunity's part, but, uh, you know, soldiering on. I had a hard time. I still have a hard time soldiering on because <laughs> my voice is like, hey, I'm going to give up unless you talk really loudly. Um, it does sound like there is a frog-shaped dick in your throat. Well, I mean, it's similar in shape. It's mm-hmm. not quite a frog-shaped dick. It's just, you know, or maybe it's a dick-shaped similar. frog? Yeah, that one. I like that. Uh, probably, it's probably closer to that. Yeah. So we're here to talk about video game news. Mm-hmm. Um, it's mm-hmm. As far as the news segment goes, it's going to be relatively short tonight, I think. Well, I mean, there's been no news. I mean, there's been lots of there's been lots and lots of news. Just we has come to us. We've been yeah. I mean, when when I'm sick, nothing happens. Yep. Thank so, God. it's like Harvest Moon. Um, there are some things that happened. Uh, the last week we actually did a broadcast, which we didn't record video game Tango, because um, last time we recorded, I believe, was on the eighth, um, if I'm not mistaken. Week. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was the seventh. The last time we recorded, and on the eighth. Uh, we got uh, some news. The horseman, the plague horseman, as as we now. Well, to. no, because you and I got probably different things. Yeah, I think we. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. We we we're exposed to the general public, so it is yeah, what it is. Mm, mm. Yeah, but as far as video game news goes, Josh, you want to get us uh, started yeah, off? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, hey, has anybody heard of this thing uh, called Harry Potter? Absolutely. Okay. I know that one. Uh, it's, uh, you know, this little little book series. Uh, got a few movies. Uh, a couple of actually all right video games in the past. But it has a new game coming out. And uh, much like its name, there's a, there's a bit of a bit of trouble with, with some legacy here. So uh, Gaming Circle Jerk, r slash uh, Gaming Circle Jerk, which is, uh, it's a, you know, it's Reddit, and Game it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's a fun, jokey jerk side of Reddit. <laughs> uh, yes. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, sometimes they do unjerk things, and one guy uh, essentially came out Grizz Grizzly twenty Grizzly Grizzly Peak seventy two Peak seventy two posted uh, a photo with J.K. Rowling on the cover of the game, uh, saying like, "Yeah." Just a friendly, re- I'm gonna I'm gonna say here a direct quote: a friendly reminder from your mod team that this woman is a turf, and anyone who pledges to support her monetarily is also a transphobe. Would you define turf for us? Uh, turf is, in case you don't know, is trans exclusionary <clears throat> radical feminist, uh, and it, so what that essentially breaks down to is they don't recognize a trans person's right to exist. It's Mm -hmm. it's what it breaks down to, which, um, as you know, regarding people's right to exist, you should probably just lean into it and let them, uh, (laughs) you know, like that's as wise words. Yeah. Uh, here at video game tango, we respect people's right to exist. But that raises a fair point. Uh, we have we've not been playing Activision Blizzard games for uh, in, until they improve the the workplace uh, into a way that it, that people aren't being assaulted or made to feel you know uh, pressured and you know are treated fairly, right? Yeah. 
is 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 that a fair statement there? If you this the simple purchase of this game because there's a lot of Harry Potter fans. I mean, I used to be one. Uh, was was a pretty big fan of the series. Uh, can you can you separate the artistry from the artist? Because uh, this, you know, Harry Potter, it's a phenomenon. Every you know connects people worldwide with a mutual interest. Do you, does purchasing this game make you a? It certainly doesn't make you an ally. That's I mean that's not that's you can't you can't call yourself an ally and buy this game. I think that's a fair statement. But does buying the game, knowing that the money is going to go to a person who is actively funding groups that refuse to believe trans people exist, like that that they should have any rights, does that make you a transphobe? Does that make you a transphobe? I d- I no, mean, but it, ina- it it makes you an enabler of transphobes. Yes. Well, I mean, right. well, I mean, does that put you at the table? Like, I mean, dude, if you sit down with ten transphobes at a table, well, now there's eleven trans. Like, does think that- about it this way, because I see what you're saying. <laughs> is if that earning you a seat at the table? Recently, That's I don't know if this, this is true saying. enough. I or heard what this person's saying. I heard uh, a rumor that Cosby is going to go back doing c- comedy tours when he's out. If I went and watched his show, that doesn't make me a rapist, but it no. means I'm a, I'm supporting and enabling a rapist, yeah. which is pretty bad. That's that's not. That's not certainly not good. Yeah, that's the opposite of good. So uh, yeah. So I mean, it's just important you define terms. You know, it, it, it you really start splitting hairs. Like if you're gonna buy the Harry Potter Legacy game and you know about Rowling's vitriol and all that, then you're actively making the choice because she has the royalties to Harry Potter. You're giving her money. Yeah. You know? yeah. There is some stupid small argument to be made that's unfortunately true that this game's probably going to sell amazingly well because it's kind of really the first massive Harry Potter game. And so many Harry mm-hmm. Potter fans yeah. either don't know about rallying stuff or, or don't, don't care. care. Or like, so not, okay, not caring's maybe an unfair thing yeah, to say, just, I guess. I don't know. They're, don't, they're, uh, they don't, they're moderates. Yeah. They're they don't defensive. care enough not to, they don't care enough to boycott a thing that they yeah. care about. That doesn't deeply, mean that you, know? you shouldn't. Yeah. Right. Like I have no intentions on spending the money for the same reason that if Cosby made a game, I wouldn't buy his game. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, if Andrew Tate made a video game, I'm not buying his game. I don't care how good it is. Right. Personally. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to buy this game. And there's a couple of reasons. One, I don't have that enough interest Two, that's true. I don't want to support somebody who I see as a bigot. Yeah. yeah. Now, the 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 here the thing is here is I'm also not going to judge anybody for purchasing this game because I don't think they're doing it for the reasons of uh, pushing turf yeah. ideology. Right. That's going to be a very small percentage. Of people yeah. The game. And you know, like just as just as I don't I don't I don't judge people that go eat in Chick Fil A. Right. Um, Chick Fil A we know has contributed to anti-gay propaganda, anti-gay uh, uh, legislation. Um, and I'm not, I'm not going to judge people too harshly to, you know, when they want to go eat some chicken that they go get Chick-fil-A. Right. Um, I know gay people that eat Chick-fil-A. I mean, They're willing to look past it. Um, and who am I, who am I to judge? I am, I am not gay. So who, who am I to judge a gay person that does that? Right. There is an important sentence that I don't know if everyone's heard. Um, that there is no ethical consumption under capitalism. Yes. yes. It is not an excuse, but it's, it's a sentence to start someone thinking that everything you do in like American society is going to be exploiting someone. Yes. Yep. So after you handle that question, you wrap your head around it and it drives you nuts and you try to figure out what the fuck you do, you come to the conclusion, hopefully, that you make choices where you can. If I need, you know, if I don't have a lot of money, I need toilet paper and dishwasher soap and all these things. I I can't afford to be ethical about my consumption of daily, immediate, important emergency things, right? I can, however, choose to try to be ethical when it comes to entertainment or frivolous expenditures, Mm -hmm. right? You know, I'm not going to go out because those kinds of things, as much as we need them, you need entertainment to survive. Like you get a choice, right? So Chick-fil-A and Harry Potter, these are the kinds of things where you have a choice not to. Yes. You know, it's not like you need gasoline and you're exploiting something or you buy something made out of metal and it was mined in a mine by children. Like 
there's only so much you can do, yeah. you know, but th- yeah, this is one of those rare situations where it's like, you absolutely have a choice. There's so many good games out there. You, you don't need to play the Harry Potter one. Yeah. Right. Well, and then like, so like what we're talking about so far with the concerns about this game is just the money that's going to JK Rowling. Then there's the content of the, of, of, of yeah. the Harry Potter universe itself. Uh, the house elves, being slaves and not only being slaves, but being okay with being slaves. Like that's, that's like a little extra twist, you know, like they thought the, the, the weirdo elf who wanted freedom and enjoyed being paid for money is a we like being paid for his work is a weirdo. Yeah. Uh, right. And, See, we all, me, this is a whole different conversation. Right. You can it, it is. But I just okay, want to throw so, that out there. Yeah. So there's that whole there's that whole aspect, but in the game, like the chief one of the chief things that you do is put down a goblin rebellion, and like in a lot of fantasy things, you can people, especially nowadays, are construing uh, fantasy races, orcs, and you know, with with real people, right, with yeah. actual races of people or whatever. Uh, but there is like a like you can almost do a one to one comparison. That's for that's the thing though the is goblins and Harry Potter and in in Jewish stereotypes. Yeah, but I don't think unless that was intentional, then I don't think that matters too much because they are fantasy creatures at this, sure, at, at this point. Sure, like, but you're playing a fantasy fascist cop who's putting down a fucking rebellion for freedom, uh, which yeah, I, I, we've played other video games that yeah, do that. Though. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, I mean, but with, I don't know. It's just, it's like, again, it's like a, it's like a shit salting on the rim, I suppose. Because there's already so many, I don't know, I guess I would call negative PR aspects surrounding The only this reason game. this is under the spotlight is because of J.K. Rowling. Yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, if it, if it weren't for the issues surrounding J.K. Rowling, this fantasy world wouldn't be under such scrutiny. Yeah, it's true. It wouldn't be, but... I think this is a this is a good place to bring up something that's really important to me when it comes to conversations like this. It's taking the time to have a good faith conversation and defining yeah. terms. So I when I when I get a gray situation like this, the the goblins and Harry Potter, I like to frame it in my mind on an axis. So if in video games we have slimes with a smiley face on one end as almost impossible to like diegetically anthropomorphize as a given race or ethnicity or religion. Yeah. On the other hand, we have a game where there's just Chinese people in coolie hats that you're shooting. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that's an example axis of racism. Yeah. Right. Now where you put something like the Harry Potter goblins, it's important to know intent. And this conversation comes up a lot in D and D regarding races like the drow. Right. Yeah. And how you handle that. So does it need to be handled at all? I mean, that really comes down to the group. But before I get too into the weeds, I don't know off the top of my head if J.K. Rowling had in mind to be Jewish people when she made the goblins. Because yeah. if, you know, I don't want to be an apologist because I don't know anything yeah. about this. But if I wanted a curmudgeonly stubborn banking type and I made them like dwarves or gnomes or something... They weren't quite goblins. Is that less offensive? Because goblins have much more kind of a real world connotation than like a dwarf yeah. does, mm-hmm. right? So in, intent's important. Even if she didn't intend it, there are sometimes works that through just like convergent evolution come across as problematic. You yeah. know, you might not have meant to do it, but you know, once a, an author creates a work, it is now out of their hands, yes. right? So. All that, like you were saying, combined with the transphobe stuff, maybe she did intend it, maybe she didn't. But this is where it even gets more delicate. When it comes to putting down a goblin rebellion in a game, now you need to start asking like the game designers, the narrative designers of this game, their intent. Because how many games do you put down goblin rebellions in? A billion. Yeah. Right. Goblins Plenty. are stand ins. They're for, quintessential. They're a thing for you to fight. Yeah. Right. But with the flavor that the Harry Potter universe has on goblins, 
you know, if you can imagine if they were slightly more like Romani esque, like how much worse that might be. Yeah. But you know, I don't know if the goblins in Harry Potter had any kind of religious canon. You know, it's one thing that they're curmudgeonly, apparently ugly, big nosed goblin people, but like, there's a conversation in D and D about whether orcs are racist against black people. Yeah. And in my mind, up until this point in time, I literally have never drawn a connection. No, I've two. never associated the two. That doesn't mean that's not there. Sure. Just personally for me, like it never occurred to me that these green and tan skin or like if anything, they would be more, uh, you know, primitive human. Yeah. yeah. Right. Cause they even live in like leather tents mm-hmm. and hunt Mastodon with like wargs, you know, it never occurred to me that there's a specific ethnicity, but yeah, you know, is that a reason to bu- not buy or buy a game? I don't know about the goblin thing. Yeah. It, again, you have to, we'd have to wonder about the intent, but something like just the fact that she is an out and out, out and out turf acknowledging, you know, she's getting royalty money from this. Uh, it makes it kind of cut and dry for me as to whether I would buy the game or not. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah. Personally, I don't, I don't support her works anymore. Um, not that I was ever that huge into the universe. Anyways, I watched all the I Harry was. Potter movies. I but, loved them. I've done. Um, that's it. Perfect timing for those books. Yeah, for and sure. Chat brings up a, a good point, you know? Yeah. If you want to read that verbatim, is, that I, I mean, I think, I think naughty night and chat is making great yeah, points. Naughty quote. Thinks it's a serious distraction from Malaysia issues that should be focused on. That slavery is a made up universe while slavery is going on in real life uh, isn't ignored because of the spotlight being drawn elsewhere. It's very true. It's, 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 human trafficking and slavery is very real, very common. It happens right here in America, in every state, in every city, and it's going on right now. Yeah. You know, sometimes and, governors do it. Yeah. 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 yeah like uh, every holiday, yeah. <laughs> apparently. Right. <laughs> it's a bigger, bigger tradition. Um, so, yeah, you know, we, you get into the larger umbrella of constant media influx and it's a good point there. There's also a lot to be said about how art mirrors reality. Right. And you are going to draw inspiration from real, from real life and put that in what you make. Um, now in, in that case, you do sometimes have to be careful, right? That you're not accidentally making something racist or homophobic or transphobic. Um, so it, it should be, there should be thought put into it. Right. Um, but at the same time, we are talking about fantasy worlds here. Um, and you know, you, you brought up the drow from D and D, um, and that's been an ongoing, a very long conversation. I'd say the only thing that I see between in similarity between black people and the drow is that their skin is of a very dark complexion, Right. Um, yeah, and I would say that's just black. Yeah. Like, and and I, th- they're pitch black skin. So it's not even realistic. Right. So, uh, you know, that's, that's the only similarity that I would draw between the two, but there are people that see that as quintessentially racist, right? Uh, because of the color of their skin that is now, um, now the intent was to mirror black people in, from your life, from your life. It, I, I vehemently agree against that. Um, just because of the way they are. I mean, like we're literally talking of, uh, Fantasy creatures, they, they have that black skin because they live in permadark and they've, ad- and they've adapted to it, right? Yeah. I mean, in most cases, you have to consider that, like you were saying, because we only have our lives to draw off of when we create art. Yeah. There are going to be influences there. Yeah. But I think one thing that's lacking, and we have social media and constant uh, fucking Skinner box TikTok things to thank for this, we're raising generations of people they don't understand nuance. Yeah. They don't understand complexity when it comes to these themes and topics. You know, you think about, um, who's the, the whitewash raft, um, Tom Sawyer, Tom Sawyer. Like there's a reason that book has racism stuff in it. And just because of the fact that there are racist things in it does not make the work racist. Yeah. That's not true. A hundred percent of the time. But if you literally can't have a black skinned character without them immediately people looking for ways to tie that to real life situations, then what do we have to do at all? Like you couldn't have any anthropomorphic features in anything. Right. Of course you can draw a connection if you look for it. You know, (laughs) I think back, I had this in the first time in a long time, I got caught into an internet argument on Reddit over this group of college people that had done a dissertation 
on how the barbarians and civilization, the video game, uh, were racist against indigenous people. And, and they had come to these super Byzantine conclusions and just absolutely grasping at straws when it's it, the unit exists there for mechanical purposes. Right? Yeah. Like you have, there's literally Native American, is, you can play as Native Americans in Civ as a full blown Civ. So you can't sit there and tell me that these barbarians are racist against Native Americans. It's like, that's. Right. I, how do, how does this fly? But they were literally doing a full like college dissertation paper on it. Mm -hmm. Like this is something that is considered acceptable to do. And I don't want to hand ring about the newest generation doesn't understand fucking nuance, but we're losing it. You know, yeah. I think back to Dobby and I'll finish up here in a second. I don't know if I don't remember well enough about Harry Potter to know if this is the case, but having a character who is, uh, Stockholm syndrome into slavery to the point where they've accepted it. And then uh, Hermione and whatnot slowly trying to get them to understand that what this is, is bad mm -hmm. and going through that struggle. That is a real life connection to people who were in abusive relationships yeah. or corporate nightmares, you know, wage slaves. Mm -hmm. That is the kind of thing, the nuance that is good for people to read. You're yeah. using fantasy as a stand in to explore real world struggles. I don't remember that's exactly what happened. But it's a, it's a a joke. The organization is made to look like a joke. Exactly. With the acronym called. And that's where Steam. things get really yep. convoluted. Yeah. Yep. You know, it's like, was she really attempting to use us as a stand-in to teach a lesson about abusive relationships right. and power? Or was it just there as a funny gag? Or was it somewhere in between? I don't know if we'll know, you know. But having those kinds of conversations, these ones where we talk about these things. Yes. That's where the worth comes from this work. Yes, 100%. Yeah. The, these conversations are important to have, um, even when it comes to these made-up works, right? Um, because at the end of the day, what what it boils down to is artist and creator intention and then your perception of it. So mm -hmm. the perception aspect of it is important to, I think, to to put real thought into and is worth being discussed. Yeah. At the end of the day, again, Harry Potter is an entertainment thing. There's a million yeah. other games out there. I know if you love Harry Potter, you might really want to play it. There are other Harry Potter games out there. Yeah. Play those. For sure. Yeah. Or, you know. Or pirate it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo -ho, That's maybe. not the official stance of Video Game Tango. We stand against torrenting and using Tixati. Nah, I don't give a shit. Torn all you want. Just <laughs> like, you know, uh, we're not going to do that because yeah, we're, we're upstanding citizens and... Yeah. Uh, we don't have our sea legs. Uh, so going on to other problematic parts of the industry, mm. let's hey. talk about Activision Blizzard. Hey. hey, so we just have a little bit of follow up. Just want to talk about, because it's an ongoing story and we talked about the developments as they happen. Um, on December 8th, the federal trade commission, uh, also known as the FTC has, it won't let me be has officially sued to block Microsoft's acquisition of Activision Blizzard. The agency alleges that maker of Xbox would gain control of top video game franchises, enabling it to harm competition in high performance gaming consoles and subscription services by denying or degrading rivals access to its popular content. There are so many beer cut words in there that I literally didn't hear. What you said. <laughs> I think it's because of the voice that I use because it's a fairly concise. Uh, well, I think oh, it's a well wrapped a monopoly stuff. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So the FTC, I'm, I'm really impressed by the, so I read that directly from the headline of the, uh, the FTC article. Um, and that is the, that is their summary of, of the suit. Um, what I find really interesting is that the FTC is writing about video games. Like they know what they're talking about. It's actually kind of incredible. Okay. Um, I think that honestly, like th this isn't terribly surprising. That the FTC is getting involved officially. That was like, a, uh, yeah. uh, you know, at best a 50, 50% 50 chance happening during this acquisition. Um, so the news isn't necessarily that it's happening. I mean, that's, a, that's important too, but the news is how well they're, how well they're, they're doing this. Uh, so they're acknowledging other parts of the industry, um, including other developers, um, talking about their game, like Activision Blizzard game specifically and how they're iconic um, and talking about their individual sales. So let's, let's take one excerpt here from 
from the article. It's actually a very short article. I highly suggest everybody check it out. Um, I'm going to link it in chat. And of course it's going to be in the show notes as well. Um, but here, uh, let's, I just lost it because I, I linked. Okay. So Activision is one of only a very small number of top video game developers in the world that create and publish high quality video games for multiple devices, including video game consoles, PCs, and mobile devices. It produces some of the most iconic and popular video game titles, including Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Diablo, and Overwatch, and has millions of monthly active users uh, around the world, according to the FCC, FTC's complaint. Activision currently has a strategy of offering its games on many devices regardless of producer, but that could change if the deal is allowed to proceed. With control over Activision's blockbuster franchises, Microsoft would have both the means and motive to harm, harm competition by manipulating Activision's pricing, degrading Activision's game quality, or player experience on rival consoles and gaming services, changing the terms and timing of access to Activision's content, or withholding content from competitors entirely, resulting in harm to consumers. Well, every doesn't every fucking game like Sony does that? Yeah, for sure. Sony's doing that uh, they're right doing now. It actively, they're doing right it actively now. to uh, uh, in opposition to Microsoft's acquisition. It's, I, I mean, that's true. They, it's like everyone did that. Like there, there were plenty of people that like you got a year on Epic before yeah. it comes out on Steam, right? Yeah. Or, like, I mean, that's that's part of the fucking deal. No, you're like, right. Absolutely. Then you come up with 64 fucking billion dollars, and you fucking buy it. 69 billion dollars. So, I don't... So, the... the like my that's, quick, that, that's 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 a whiny that's a whiny, especially with all of like the decade long guarantees that come that that's that I disagree with you a little bit. That, that's whiny. That's just being one whiny. thing to consider is Sony's a little different than Activision Blizzard. Yeah, Sony is the umbrella company for all Sony stuff. Activision Blizzard, it I, I don't know about other companies. I was trying to find it. They make up eleven percent of industry revenue. Yes. Alone. Just Activision okay, Blizzard's titles. And then yeah. the acquisition is by Microsoft, who now owns Bethesda, right? Yeah. Id. I'm just, has, has, but have they withheld Bethesda games from other? They're going to. So let's get into the next part of the article. Okay. Um, well, actually, technically, the next article is gamers are suing to stop Microsoft from buying Activision Blizzard. There is a coalition of 10 self-described gamers uh, suing in U.S. federal court to stop the acquisition. That's kind of a uh, nothing burger. The next part is three future Bethesda titles will be Xbox and PC exclusive, says Microsoft. So we already know Starfield is going to be exclusive to Xbox and Game Pass for PC. That's something that we know already. What else is on the horizon? for Bethesda right now. Fallout. The only other games they have that have been announced is Redfall, Elder Scrolls 6, and Fallout 5. Those are all big games. Redfall obviously being a new IP and Redfall. so Redfall isn't being uh uh developed by Bethesda, it's only being published. So that's there's chance that that might end up being one of the three, yeah. but it's the least likely of the three that's going to be Xbox and Game Pass exclusive, being that Bethesda is only publishing that title. So, realistically, we are looking at possibly Starfield, one of the most anticipated games in the century, Elder Scrolls VI, which we already know just because of the sales of previous Elder Scrolls skim, uh, games, especially considering Skyrim, is going to be a massive hit, whether it's good or not. And then Fallout 5, which falls under the same category, right? Those are huge titles. In all likelihood, the Elder Scrolls 6 and Fallout 5 follow-ups to huge franchises are going to be Microsoft exclusive. You, you know, That wasn't part of the fucking deal. Like, if they made a deal... For it not to be exclusive, then it wouldn't be. So I, I'm just saying, and also it hasn't happened yet. They haven't announced that it's going to be exclusive. They have. This is officially announced. Uh, Three uh, Bethesda titles are going to be exclusive just, to okay. Xbox and PC Game Pass. Well, I mean, that was that was a different deal. They're saying that Modern Warfare won't be that way. So, yeah. I mean, and if it's in contract then it's in contract yeah so i i don't know no you're right 
I, I mean, you are 100% right, but let's think about it ethically and morally. Well, I mean, e- ethically saying, hey, they're doing this thing that they're allowed to do. You're right. The people shaking their fingers. Like, that's, I mean, that's, you know. Yeah, there, it's a, there's a little bit of pot calling the kettle black. But let's look at it. Strong look at it from the bullseye after you've already thrown the dart. Let's look at it from the side of the FTC, whose job is to make sure that we don't have monopolies. Right? Well, I, I mean, I just... I just don't understand. Like, I guess it's a huge purchase, but like, it's massive. It's ma- but it's a massive purchase, and that alone requires the, F- the FTC to look at it. I I hundred percent agree with that. But then, like, I I get that Kroger buying Safeway Albertsons is yes a smaller purchase, but that directly led to monopolizing of p- of food, which is necessary. Yeah. Like there's going to be towns where the choice is Walmart or Kroger yeah. and that's it. And like, and if those two agree to not fight prices on each other and just keep it at media, like that's price gouging, which is a number one thing that the fucking FTC is supposed to fight. And it was, it's with food, which is important. And they just turned a fucking blind eye to that. I just don't understand what the fucking hard on is for, for video games when they're like already like hey the most popular titles will agree to fucking longevity deals like i mean fuck off fuck off that, that's kind of like that's where i'm at with it if I, the it, food it, stuff well, you were saying is true i think that's a really good point but i was sitting there in my head trying to think like where on this spectrum this axis i would fall on because when it comes to monopolies you have to ask yourself like honestly what is the problem with monopolies right you think about what exactly are the things that can go wrong. And in a nutshell, the more power a company has over a given product or branch of things, the more like room they have to start down a slippery slope, right? If yes. we had a food company that was small and they're just doing food company things, the more and more food companies they control, like you're saying, they can start lowering quality and charging more because there's fuck no you, there's no competition, right? Yeah. So this is not a great analogy, but let's think of something like Amazon. Amazon 20, 30 years ago was not a necessity. It was a shipping company, right? Like yeah. you could buy stuff on Amazon, yeah. oh, well, whatever. Amazon has their fingers in everything now, right? Talk about Monopoly, yeah. right? So Microsoft is doing game with Activision Blizzard, but you also have to consider that the more money Microsoft gets, they become a monopoly. That means more and more their consoles are going to be the consoles in people's houses. And eventually those consoles might be doing other things other than being playing games. I think like Amazon Alexa and whatnot. So the idea in my thinking is that at some degree, you got to put a hard line that monopolies are just bad. Yeah. And if sure. we put effort into stopping them, regardless of what the monopoly is over, it's probably going to be a good thing for the majority of people. Mm-hmm. Right. But then you put that in the context, like you're saying that, like, these are companies that make entertainment products. And it seems on the surface like they're just bitching because they're not going to get a big share of the Call of Duty money. Right. It's like, oh, boo fucking who make better games. Yeah. And then you won't have that problem. And and I think that's the argument that you're making. And I I kind of agree with that one. Make better games. Yeah. I feel it. Yeah. So. But. Altruistically, morally speaking, it would right? be ethically, e- ethically, yeah. yeah. Companies don't have morals. <laughs> well, that's, that's. I mean, fr- from uh, from us, if we're to project, okay. Yeah. Um, morality speaks. Um, ethically speaking, it's it's probably not right for this acquisition to take place. Now, that being said, I am looking it up right now. Yeah. The biggest video game companies in the world in 2022, based on uh, 2021's uh, revenue. Number one is Sony. So the biggest kid on the playground is crying? Yes. No. no. Microsoft is second. So Sony made $24.9 billion in reported revenue in 2021. Microsoft made $16.3 billion, and they are number two. So about two-thirds of what Microsoft made. Now, Activision Blizzard is number five at $8.8 billion in revenue in 2021 thing is 8.8 billion dollars is half of microsoft's yes so they're increasing their their revenue revenue by 50 percent they will now be the biggest gaming organization but only by 200 billion or uh 200 million dollars but 
Still. Tough titty. Come up with a, like, yeah. so the the kid at the top of the mountain is complaining that just he down. can't just yeah. push down other kids. Fuck that. Yeah. Fuck that. I'm with you. I mean, like if that, this was like a sports competition, you guy who's known as the best runner, and suddenly this other guy gets a huge sponsorship, and now he's got real competition, yeah, this and he's is, pissed about it. This is you know, the Yankees saying it's unfair that other people are allowed to have <laughs> yeah. championships. Yeah. yeah, like come on, no, get over it. I I think if come up with a better deal, you made more money. Monopoly concerns, then I would be yeah, hundred percent on your side. I'm yeah. about seventy percent on that side that this is just bullshit. Yeah, because at the end of the day, if they're not willing to stop fucking like the Kroger shit going on. Then, like, what the fuck does this matter? Like you said, yeah. It, yeah. Right. It just, At the end of the day, yeah, it just, it just feels something. Someone's money grubby yeah. right now. Someone's like, money grubby. Let, let's let's take those two comparisons back here again. Um, the acquisition between Microsoft and Activision Blizzard, and the acquisition between Kroger and Safeway. Okay, one is certainly more important than the other to everybody's daily lives, mm-hmm. and that's obviously the grocery store chains. Um, one is really impressive because of the, of, of the money, the, the monetary transaction. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and it's also, you know, it's as far as it goes, we're just, we are just talking entertainment here. Yeah. Over, I mean, ultimately. Yeah. But so yes, one would have been certainly more important. So it is kind of a shame that we are seeing just because the money changing hands is a lot more that we're seeing the FTC jump into this and not something that is actually important, like Kroger buying Safeway. I think, I think honestly, that's the biggest take that I have from this, this story I mean, here. They were like this, let the superconductor thing. Cause that was widely acknowledged as being good for American electronics. The, mm-hmm. the superconductor deal that went through, I think this last summer, oh, I missed it. um, so, yeah, like, I mean, when it's beneficial to someone or to the right someone, I mean, maybe if Microsoft had just paid some, uh, uh, not propagandists, what is, uh, yeah, yeah, um, the thing, uh, the thing that you do when you're not, a, when you're not yeah. a politician anymore, yeah, 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 yeah. uh, what are they called? I know what you're talking about. I farting. do too. I, yeah. Not sponsor, but it's like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll oh my God. Yeah. yeah. War, not war profiteer, but you're just as bad. Uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You broke my brain, Josh. I Oh, my God. I can't. Th- it's on the tip of my tongue. You bastard. Anyways. Yes. No. Anyway. It, I, it's a, I think it's a good thing that the FTC is looking into this, certainly. I, I think it's important that the FTC look into it. Sure. Because, I, yeah. because it should be yeah. doing this in every yeah. industry, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It may sure. be the least important of the industries to be looking in right now as far as monopolization is concerned. But it's a good thing that they're looking into it. This is their job. Yeah, Thank I, you, I, Justin. I, Lobbyists. 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 Yes. yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Chat coming in with the win. That's right. But yeah, you know, like I mean, that's that's the thing. It's just like someone paid a few more lobbyists from you know the Sony big Sony uh, to come in and fucking <laughs> like it, it, I don't know. I just I think they put all their money I, I in the state I'm, of California already because California I, decided it was okay. I'm, I I guess I'm a bit pissy. I guess I'm just pissy about it. Where it's like, why why does this get the fucking evil eye? But you literally you just let everything else go. Well, I mean, let's I guess, let's tr- let's change let's change it here a little bit. Uh, would you be okay with Sony acquiring Activision Blizzard? I'm sure. Okay. I'm as, I would be as okay with it as Microsoft. I guess. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> No, I'd be a little more pissy, I guess, because I play on a PC and it doesn't affect me. <laughs> sure. More. Yeah. I mean, if Sony was making the same promises, then I would say sure. Yeah. I, I mean, because they're like, hey, we're not going to give you the deal in perpetuity, but we'll just renegotiate in 10 years. Yeah. No, like, Sony has recently proven that they're that they'll take money if it's well, on the table. Look at what they did. No, look at the Disney shit with Spider Man. Right, yeah. that's a perfect no, example. So, no, listen, Sony is the pot. Yeah, sure, big time, absolutely. Because they make exclusivity deals constantly. In yeah. fact, one of the reasons they're so upset is because they want to maintain Call of Duty exclusivity for earlier for an early launch and for DLC. 
There is Sony exclusive DLC, and they've always gotten an early launch for the last several uh, Call of Duty games. So yeah, of, of course no, they're fighting is, teeth the, and nail for this shit. This is just yeah. This is literally just the the like the big kid at the top of the pile fighting equal like you know it's going to make things more equal no we don't get the exclusive early yeah. release that's not fair Fairly, yeah and now like, the companies are going to be worth the same within two within uh yeah 200 million dollars like that's yeah. not fair no come on it, it's then no, you yeah. should have came up with a better deal yeah I, so, you're, I mean you're definitely convincing me given sony's fucking situation yeah if Sony was behind Microsoft, it'd be yeah. If different. they were, if if they were in fifth or something, then it'd be like, yeah, you're standing up. It's like, no, dude. Like, yeah, right now we're talking about Activision Blizzard and Microsoft being the underdogs trying to take on big, big Sony. Well, that's I, fucking that's, crazy. That, that's mm -hmm. that's fucking crazy. You know, it's a weird world we live. You know, it is. You should have put the new fucking God of War on PC, bitch. I'd be arguing yeah. for you. True that. <laughs> no, that's, that's the our lobbyists. <laughs> <laughs> that is not. That is not what my argument is based on. I'm just like to me, it's it's crazy. I understand just the sheer amount of money and everything, but it would make more sense in this argument of it not being fair if they weren't. Like, no, you're right. Yeah. Sony's umbrage is yeah. totally, totally unwarranted. It's yeah. it's just not okay. Yeah. Fuck who's, who's fuck right those behind guys. Microsoft. Right behind who's Microsoft saying? is uh, Nintendo. What if they they got any fucking input on it? Nintendo hasn't said shit. That's because yeah, like, Nintendo doesn't. They're well, no, they're they're, they're like, totally insulary. Yeah, yeah they keep it themselves. Uh, the Microsoft guys like it's coming to Nintendo too, and they're like, if we want it, bitch. Yeah. They, yeah. Like what? <laughs> like I mean, they even promised the to put it on Nintendo. Like I mean, yeah. that's more that's more systems. But it's let's, currently being offered on now. So even the argument of like, oh, well, they could really narrow it down. They're offering to put it on more things than it's on now. There is no basis for this fucking argument. Come up with a better one. Come up with a better argument. All right. Reach. We got spicy. I want to play a game. Okay. All right. So while, while I'm here at this site, uh, Nintendo is number three. Who would you guess the fourth largest gaming company in the world is? Ubisoft. Mm, EA. Tencent. I forget that I don't yeah. count. Uh, we, are talk, we, are, we, we are talking internationally. Yep. Yeah, that's kind of true. Yeah. Their games aren't real. All right. So we know uh, number five is Activision Blizzard. What do you think number six is? Zynga. Gosh, now that I know Tencent's in the fucking room. Zynga is owned by somebody now. I think they're owned by Microsoft, actually. Oh, well. I'm still going to say EA. Josh, you're right. It's Electronic Arts. Hell yeah. Look at me yeah. go. Number seven. Dude, I don't. I don't fucking know now. Wait. You got, you got, you got Bungie. You got, uh, no, dude. You you, well, <laughs> we're talking top ten. It could be. They could be top ten. Bungie's thirteenth. Mm. Calling it. Destiny's fucking over. When you hear it, you're gonna be like, oh yeah, that makes sense. Co not Konami. Is it Konami? No. Konami does like pachinko gambling stuff. They're big, but they're yeah. not. They're not. That I dude. mean, there's Capcom, oh, there's no, 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 Sega, no, no. there's Wait. Ubisoft. Oh, come on, Josh. We're what just are you talking about game of? publishers? Uh, I don't know the distinction here. I mean, because these places both publish and create games. They have yeah, they do. Uh, it's the, the, the people who do... Uh, the top 10 big, biggest video game companies in the world... By revenue. Call of Duty? No, not Call of Duty. Well, Fucking, I know. Uh, <laughs> has the that badass villain dude. Uh, no, Far you're wrong. Cry. All right. No, it's. <laughs> the Far Cry games. It's Epic games. Saw. Epic games. Epic really? games. I was going to say Epic or like Steam, but I didn't yeah. know that qualified. Take Two oh, Interactive okay. is next. <clears throat> then Ubisoft. And then Bandai Namco. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Bandai Namco at $2 billion. Who owns Rockstar? Uh, take Two. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say Rockstar's worth a lot of fucking money. Yeah, three point four billion though. Of course, there wasn't a big Rockstar game last year, and this is based That's, on twenty twenty one. They don't do a big yearly game. They do. Yes, people keep uh, buying uh, fucking shark cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah bastards. Say, yeah, need like, to put a game yeah, out every year, dude. All right, you shark card loving motherfuckers, you're the reason we don't have GTA six yet. Yes, bitch. that is a hundred percent true. It is. <laughs> yeah. 
You're right, Naughty Night. Epic does give away a lot of games. Um, it it's could, not a bad thing, but it's something they have to do. It could be said that it's problematic, but uh, at the end of the day, it does get free games in the hand, into the hand of gamers, and that means that I have no problem with it. Um, there are people that make the argument that it's problematic because Steam can't do that um, because they can't. I mean, I guess technically they could, but could so they not? so they could. But the reason Epic is able to put these games out free is because they buy all of those licenses for a large, you know, uh, what are they, mm-hmm. when you buy in bulk. Yeah, chunk. Yeah. Big old chunk of change so, there. Yeah. Uh, Steam does have free games, but what they don't do is buy all the licenses for the free games that were, that were you know, purchased in their store. Um, which is what Epic's doing. Epic has the funds that they can just funnel money into the people. And like, they're, they're taking a loss on every single time you, you click, put add to cart. Um, whereas steam does not do that. Uh, steam has never given away a game for free. Um, there are free games available on steam and they do publisher deals where the publisher will put them up for free for a weekend or whatever, but those were not purchased by steam. Um, so, you know, it, some people see the, give the, the Epic games giveaways as, uh, anti-competitive practice. I disagree. I um, mean, that's, it's how they're competing. It's how I was going to say that, that to me seems how they're competing. It is. Yeah. If it became a problem, steam would give away games. Like they, it, it, like if it became a, like an actual issue for them, but they're doing fine, obviously. Yeah. So they're like, well, let's keep to our model and it works just fine. Um, and then like, cause I simply will use steam because that's what I started using and that's what I'm comfortable with. And that's what I like. Yeah. So they, it's got a better interface. It's got a, it's got got a larger library. They got the, they got the loyalty chains on me. So sometimes I have to wait a year for a game, whatever. And like, see, like I'm cool with that also. It's like when something coming out and it's like a year exclusivity i get that that's a fucking deal that somebody made i get that that's fine i don't know like i hate it, it i hate it sure i hate it but it's like whatever man i guess you know it, I'm, I'm, I'm a little pissy about it but i at least understand it. I'm, a, I'm a big steam boy myself but i'll get the game where the fuck it's being distributed at the end of the day i want to play the game i take I don't a hard care. moral stance on exclusivity yeah, as far as exclusivity goes, yeah, I don't like the if exclusivity. If there's any exclusivity in a game, I don't want to support it. Yeah. I don't care what game it is, who's doing it. That's anti-us, anti-the gamers. Yeah. I break so. that code every now and then. Like, you know, now something know like Epic playing God of War. really didn't have much of a fucking choice because their shit was fucking shit when it came out. The fucking Epic Game Launcher was awful. and they It's still not any. great. Yeah, yeah, it's nothing compared to the, like, you. I mean, it's not a fair comparison, Epic to Steam, you know, to apples and oranges. But oh, yeah. Steam's like coming um, home, baby. Steam's had decades and decades to do this stuff and build a community. So I understand it. Doesn't mean I'm going to support it. Yeah, sure. You know? I mean, I went on and hopped in, grabbed those Epic games that you mentioned to play them. But I was like, oh, we got games for the podcast. Maybe we can all play them together. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then that it happened. So I, I'm, I'm just yeah. always, I'm always down for free games. I'll pick up a free game wherever the fuck it's, wherever, yeah, whatever. Day, I'm not shit. giving anybody my money. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, anywho, I think that's a, a that's a bit for the news portion of the podcast. We want to talk to you guys in chat and preferably we'd get some feedback from you guys in the audio and YouTube comment section. So if you're listening to us, audio only podcast, make sure you go to videogametango.com. You can leave comments or you can leave a voicemail that we'll listen to on stream yep, with your feedback about where, what we're about to talk about. Uh, if you're if you're checking us out on YouTube, just drop it in the comments below. Uh, what your thoughts are right after you smash the like button. No. <laughs> Subscribe oh. and smash the like button. Uh, dude, listen, I, I'll, I'll, sell it, I'll sell it on our YouTube. I don't give a fuck. What year is it? It's 2022, baby. We got a fucking self-promo. Yep, yep. Uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're delivering you guys good content. Mm. Always. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we want your feedback as far as what you guys would like to see. Only if it's constructive, though. 
No, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> we'll play. I mean, as long as it doesn't break TOS, point, I'll, say whatever you want. Yeah, leave a review. Even a feelings. scathing review is a is a review. I want to know what you guys think, right? Mm-hmm. So even if it's not constructive, even if you just fucking you hate listen to our podcast, like I hate watched Halo. Let us know. Like I, I want to know what we could be doing better Master for you guys. Cheeks is a hero, <laughs> dude. Yeah, let's not talk about Halo. Uh, so, like it's it just it gets me mad. <laughs> so while my voice still works. Mm-hmm. What we're thinking about is changing up the format a little bit. Still sticking to game news. We're going to do, do game news. But what we've been doing lately is two to three and sometimes more articles per person. There's three of us usually on the podcast. There's myself, Nick, and Josh. And we usually bring between two and four, sometimes even more, articles to the podcast for news. That ends up being the vast bulk of what we discuss and, and, and what we do. Are you guys like more into us presenting you the news? Do you want to hear the news as we think, as we, as we de- uh, de- decide its importance, right? Because we're going to discuss it. Or would you rather us each bring like one, maybe two articles for time if we need it um, and discuss it at length? Something like we've done today. Yeah. That's so, what I was attempting to do. Yeah. So tonight, essentially we decided two articles. Yeah, it was more than that, but we had three articles that actually worked all together um, as far as the Activision Blizzard Microsoft uh, acquisition goes. Um, well, it was a bit more of a long-form discussion. Yeah, long-form discussion and, rather than a presentation. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, uh, maybe we didn't even go down a tangenty road. All yeah. That. I mean, too, too far anyway. Yeah. So I want to hear from you guys. Do you prefer something like we did tonight or something – closer to what we've been doing in the past. Would you rather us present you the news or would you rather us uh, give you less news, but talk about it, have longer, dis- longer form discussions. Yeah. Basically, what do you want out of our podcast? Yeah. Cause we're not just doing this for ourselves. No. Yeah. I mean, this is something that we really like to do, I'm right? Do like me. we've the last, the last two weeks that we've been off, it's been like really hard for me to say no to doing the podcast, despite the fact yes, that we were. my voice is all is just even three weeks later is fucking shot. Yeah. We, we like doing this, uh, but we want to know what you guys are into uh, because the more feedback that we get in chat, the more feedback that we get from you, we we're, we're, you know, we're trying to build a community here where we have like-minded gamers that like to talk about similar subjects and topics um, and that's what we want. So that's why we try to push the voicemails. Leave us a voicemail because we'll gladly play it on air and discuss it during the podcast. Um, one thing that I definitely want to get going is our Discord. So having a public Discord so people can share the news that they would like us to talk about. Because if yeah. we can get our viewers involved in the news, I'd really like to do that. Especially because we can't we can't cover everything and we don't see everything either. Um, and, and if, if something is important to you, we'd like to know that so we can talk about that. So we don't bore you with topics that are only, that only apply to us. us, Right. So please, uh, let us know whether you be in Twitch chat, whether you be on YouTube, whether you leave us a voicemail or a comment on our website, videogametango.com. Um, we want to hear from you guys. So sound off, make sure you let us know, like, what would you like to see more of tonight, more of a couple weeks ago? Um, of course, we're always going to have special events. So we're, when there's an yeah. indie game spectacular, we want to show you all the cool indie games. Um, when there's uh, when there's a uh, the award the show. game awards, yeah, we want to we want to cover those too. Yeah. I also w- want to throw it out there because it was implied but not said. <coughs> it doesn't have to be video game news. Yeah, like we do our side cast balcony time where we just talk about whatever, and we can do little topics here and there or deep discussions on that. Oh, big time! You know, if, if you want just but current news. Yeah. Like a lot of us listen to current news a lot. Um, some people in particular have a really good head for what's going on in politics or yeah. comedy or music, you know, or all these things. And that's just as worthy to talk about as game stuff. For sure. Absolutely. We do games because we like them, but we yeah, that's what video like game tango is. It's in the name. Things, yeah. You know, 100%. So just like, you know what we're talking about as far as making this show better. We do have another show that we do also. Um, 
it's balcony time and yeah. we do the balcony time podcast uh not necessarily weekly sometimes sometimes we don't include the, the balcony time podcast but for instance this week uh shortly after this podcast ends we're going to be recording the balcony time podcast and we're going to be talking about our D D campaign and the potentials about airing that whether it be live or in a recorded format um starting to air that with you guys um and we want to know if you want that stuff too so yeah, yeah. make sure you listen to the balcony time podcast we're going to talk about that more in depth here shortly um Give that a listen and give us feedback on that too. Give yeah. us your ideas so that we can repurpose them a little bit and give them back to you as our ideas. Yeah, we want to talk to y'all. Yep. Lend us your ideas. <laughs> <laughs>